morning. I apologize for not being at class today. Um, the husband of a dear friend that I taught with for seven years, many years ago, passed away and I'm at the funeral today. So if you could pray for the soul of uh, George Shelton, his wife, Brida, who still lives in Arlington, and her daughter, Candace, and son, John, who I both taught about 25 to 30 years ago when I was at a school called St. Maria Gritty. So anyway, um, I hopefully you've watched the little video that I uh, included in the lesson plan but you'll also watch this little demonstration. So unfortunately, I don't have the exact problems at my disposal. So these are similar to the ones that are in your notes. And then um, you'll also have some practice problems I'd like you to, to do, okay? So just to kind of re review, remember we talked about impulse the other day. If you push, remember we pushed the carts and we did it for an amount of time. And that force times time is what we call impulse. Okay. So if you push something for a little bit over a period of time, that force times time, that, that's, that's what we call the impulse. Okay. And then also we learned about momentum. So we watched that little Raiders of the Lost Ark video and remember the boulder that was chasing Indiana Jones? And we said, what were the two things that scared us about the rock? It was the fact that it had mass and that it had velocity. <clears throat> so the more mass or the more velocity, the more momentum you have. <clears throat> okay, so we, and we did a few practice problems on those the other day. But um, so anyway, what I want to teach you today is what's called the impulse momentum theorem. Basically, what it means is that an impulse causes a change in momentum. Okay, so for example, if I have uh, a bo your little brother in a wagon and he's at rest, and I begin to apply a force, the longer I apply the force, the faster he should go, the more momentum he should have. I change his momentum by applying the force for a period of time. <clears throat> and and the, the impulse, the force times time, equals the change in momentum. Okay. So anyway, so one little sample problem I gave you right here is this. Remember, we, I showed you about how a hockey player, when they apply the stick to the hockey puck and they push it, they, it's, very, it's usually a very brief moment of time, but they apply the force for a period of time. Daniel, you asked about the baseball bat hitting the baseball. So um, when a baseball player, if he just hits, meets the ball, it's going to apply a force, but for a very brief point of time. But if he swings through the ball, he's applying the force for a longer time. He's going to give it a much bigger change in momentum. Okay. And you remember... Another way to remember change in momentum or momentum is to think about how difficult is it to stop something that's moving. Usually the more mass it has, it's very difficult to stop. And of course, the faster it goes, the more difficult it is to stop. So like a train, if it's coming, is very scary because its mass is way, way larger, way less than a car. And um, Ali, I remember you shared with us some unfortunate things that happened with your family this last year where, where that happened. Okay, so, so impulse and momentum, they're related in those ways. So here's a little sample problem. A hockey player exerts a 25 Newton force for three seconds. And I ask two questions. What's the impulse and what's the change in momentum? Okay. Well, the first one's easy. Impulse is, and of course our givens would be that the force is 25 newtons and the time is 3 seconds. So the impulse is equal to the force times time. So very easy to do. Right? 
and um, substitute if you need to pause the video, please do that. All right. And it would be 25 newtons times 3 seconds. All right. Or 75 newton seconds. Yeah. So that's the answer to that. Very easy, very straightforward. The second question is, what's the change in momentum? Well, it's not very complicated because, because of the impulse momentum theorem or principle, the impulse equals the moment change in momentum. Okay. So since the impulse equals the change in momentum, remember delta is change. Right, that little triangle symbol. The answer to the second question is the same thing. The answer is that the change in momentum, delta P, remember P is momentum, delta change, is 75 newton seconds, or 75, remember mass times velocity, masses and kilograms and uh, velocities in meters per second. So you could express it either one of those ways. If I asked you to calculate the change in momentum and you got that it was 75 and they wanted to know what was the impulse, the answer would be 75. It's that, it's that simple. Okay, The impulse equals the change in momentum. All right, so I'm going to do one other little problem to demonstrate all this. <clears throat> I'm not going to write it all out. Okay. But let's imagine that a force is applied. I guess I will write it out. A force is applied for two seconds. to change an a 5 kilogram object at rest to make it go Four meters per second. So again, we're applying, we're going to have an impulse. We're going to push the object for a period of time. Okay. And we're going to do this, sorry for, yeah, we did it for two seconds. It's two seconds. Okay. So you maybe copy that down in your notes since I have a different version of it. Just put it. We're going to apply this force for a period of time. It's an impulse. And we're going to change the momentum. We're going we're gonna to make it go from rest to 4 meters per second. <clears throat> okay. So the force is unknown. That's what I want us to find. I want us to find the force required to do that. The time is 2 seconds. <clears throat> the mass is 5 kilograms. When it's at rest, that's the initial velocity. The final velocity is 4 meters per second. So let's use our impulse equals change in momentum equation. Okay, it's supposed to be I is equal to delta P. So how do we write that out? It's force times time equals the mass, the final velocity, minus the mass times the initial velocity. Momentum, momentum, subtraction means the change in momentum. Okay, So let's just substitute our numbers. We're going to have 5 times 2 
equals 5 times 4, which is our final velocity, minus our mass of 5 times our initial velocity. <coughs> so that means I'm going to change the order from f times 2 to 2f equals 20 minus 0. All right, this goes away because this is 0. And if we solve for this, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So my force is going to be required to do that would be 10 newtons. That's my answer with the correct number of significant figures. Okay. So anyway, once you use this to do the other two problems that are in the notes, and then do the practice problems and your exit ticket, and then since tomorrow uh, you have off, I guess I'll see you guys on Monday. And we're probably going to have a test Thursday or Friday next week, just to give you a heads up. Okay. Have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you soon.